Micah Frankel, CageMinds.com. At night, it's after practice. We stalked down Jerome Rivera, do an interview. King the Cage, Halloween night, ounces is Coro, Texas, taking on Jesus Urbina in the co-main event. Thank you for the time, Jerome. How you feeling? Feeling great, Micah. Thank you for the time. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What do you think about when you were told co-main event status? Uh, when JJ and Tom Vaughn brought me in the office and they showed me the contract and asked me about the fight, it's got a big smile on my face. Uh, I wanted this fight for a long time and I'm excited to get a co-main event slot. That's really exciting. Jesus is someone that we know well. We've seen him fight Nick Urso, Gene Perez, a couple other New Mexicans. So. What are your thoughts on what you've been able to see out of Jesus' game? <clears throat> um, I feel like Jesus is a really strong grappler. Um, he's really scrappy, he's fast paced, but I feel like my style matches up really good against his. Um, I feel like I'm a good grappler too, and I think it'll play out for a really exciting fight. So where do you feel you have the biggest advantage in the fight? What's your biggest advantage? Uh, I think my biggest advantage against Jesus is my length. Uh, it's going to be my length, my reach, just uh, keeping him in a good distance. But I feel like I'm strong everywhere against Jesus. I feel like uh, I match up very well against him. You're gigantic. Isn't that an advantage you have against everybody? The length and yeah. the reach? That's what I love about the weight cut sucks, but it's nice having such a good reach on everybody. So that weight cut, is it a detriment to you to make 125 pounds? Or do you feel still feel that you perform optimally come fight night? And I know you're undefeated, so why not? <laughs> yeah, I've, I haven't had too bad of weight cuts. I've usually walked around pretty light. I haven't been putting on too much weight until recently. Uh, weight cuts for my last fight was still pretty easy. I've had a couple weight cuts. I didn't even have to hit the sauna, so weight cuts aren't always too big of an issue. They always suck, but... So at your young, young age, have you thought, I'm probably going to end up as a band of weight when I get a little bigger, a little older, you know, you're going to get that man strength and muscle. 35 is going to be your destination. Um, I want to stay at 25 as long as I can, but if I start hurting my body too much or weight cuts get a little too serious, then I'll definitely think about banning weight. 4-0 after, it was a 3-0 and run, I believe, as amateur, or was that 4-0 uh, too? 4-0 too. 4-0. So now 8-0 inside the cage. What's your thoughts about this whole ride that you've been on? Uh, it just feels like it's all went by so fast, you know. I never would have imagined I would, uh, I always wanted to be... Uh, involved in some kind of sport like this as a kid and just to be here and to have gone 8-0 and is just incredible to me and it's just awesome. I just want to keep fighting and keep winning and just keep doing what people say I can't do. So we've seen you tearing up the amateur scene now for a couple years. I've been stalking you, it feels like. When was, when did you first get into the martial arts? Um, I first got into martial arts when I was 16. Um, I used to wrestle from about 1st grade to about 8th grade. And then uh, I took a year off. Uh, I missed those key high school years of wrestling, but I started training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when I was 16 with Josh Montoya. Train coming. Yeah. We'll take a time out for a minute while you guys listen to this great with us. <laughs> Always nice to have the train after practice. Right, it's the train after fit NHB practice. It has made an appearance in many of our interviews. It's just what happens this time of night in Albuquerque. We'll give it a second. Back to you, Jerome. <laughs> but yeah, I got involved in mixed martial arts when I was uh, 16 years old. Um, stopped by a jiu-jitsu school one day and I saw Joshua Montoya rolling with one of my old coaches, Justin. Um, that's where it all started from there. I just hopped in, started wrestling with them. Josh taught me a lot of jiu-jitsu. I uh, started learning boxing, kickboxing slowly. But I definitely started off doing jiu-jitsu. So right now, many years of training and everything. What are when you look at back at your most recent fight? What are some things that you're still like? Ah, oh, I need to improve on this. Um, just committing to strikes, committing to my attacks a little bit more. Um, just opening up my arsenal, just uh, throwing all the strikes that I know I have in my toolbox. Just uh, opening up a little bit more. Talking about those strikes, arsenal, everything you've been learning now fit in HB. So what's it been like being here? joining the New Mexico Wild Bunch? Uh, it's been incredible, you know, I feel like joining Faye is just the start, the restart of everything. I feel like they've just taken me in and I'm just restarting everything, wrestling, uh, my MMA game. Um, I just feel like I'm starting back from page one on everything and it's incredible. All the coaches have taken me in, helped me, helped me out a lot. Um, 
John Judy with my wrestling. He's been there just starting from the basics. Same thing with Arlene, teaching me striking. Just starting everything from the basics again, and just uh, it's been awesome. Tom Vaughn helping me with my MMA game, uh, game planning. He's a very smart guy, very knowledgeable in MMA. Now, you did most of your amateur run, King of the Cage. What does it mean now to be able to pick that back up and continue that as a pro? Uh, I've always thought King of the Cage is a very great promotion, and I always like the way they've been professional about things. Uh, I'm excited to fight with them again, keep getting fights with them. I feel like they'll keep me busy, and they're a very good promotion. Again, to be, this would be 5-0 and if you win this one. How long do you see yourself staying on the regional scene before you could envision possibly that call coming? I mean, your weight class is desperately needed up at those big leagues. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't really think about that too much, but it's definitely my goal. I get a little uh, shy to talk about it, but that's definitely my dream. I don't know how many fights, maybe a couple of years, maybe maybe six, depending how they go. If I got on a really hot streak, maybe like six wins, that'd be incredible. That'd be my dream. So. Have we seen you make it to a decision yet, pro or amateur? No, not yet. So what has it been about your style that's found these holes to finish these fights? Um, I just feel like I'm an attacker. I'm really scrappy. I like to finish fights. Uh, I feel like I put on a pace that not a lot of people are used to. And uh, just going in there with that really high killer instinct, and I feel like that's what separates me from a lot of people with killer instinct. The killer instinct. So, again, what does it mean to you now to have risen? Because we're all the way up to your a co-main event. Have you thought about that from when you've seen the contract? What's that mean as far as the prospects in your future career, you moving forward, stuff like that? Um, could you give me that one more time? Being the co-main event, as how that plays out towards you looking towards your future. Main events, title fights, those are the yeah. kind of things that come. You're making that way up that ladder. Yeah, I feel like this is a really important fight for me. Um, getting this co-main event fight. I want to perform well and show everyone what I can do and um, just get my name out there a little bit more, getting a win over Jesus Sabina. And I feel like this will be the start of bigger fights, like you said, main events, maybe bigger promotions. Not even old enough to drink yet, but we know that you've moved down here to New Mexico from your home in Santa Fe, working, school, fighting. How is it that reality has been kicked at you and what has it been like to mature like this as you're becoming an adult and a high caliber fighter very quickly? Um, I feel like it's helped me mature very quickly. Um, I've grown up very fast, I feel like, moving out on my own. Um, just the whole experience out here in Albuquerque has helped me grow up a lot also. Um, yeah, it's just a big growing, growing and learning experience, being so busy trying to juggle all my priorities still keep MMA the main focus in mind always. Uh, it's been rough. Some days are hard. Uh, I get worn out from work some days and I don't want to go train, but uh, you know, you've got to get in here and grind and work for your dream. So what does it mean to you to be chasing your dream and to so actively be pursuing it and be succeeding? Uh, it's awesome. It's amazing. Living out here in Albuquerque is like living my dream. I mean, I'm not in the UFC or anything big, but just being able to be out here fighting professional for a living, um, having that as my main thing that I do, uh, it's been incredible. I feel like I'm living the dream already. What does Jesus Urbina need to watch out for come fight night? Uh, I'm ready. I'm coming with everything. Uh, I've trained for the fight to go anywhere and just ready for an exciting fight. And then do you got a message for the fans, for the supporters? Uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's always been there for me, everyone in Santa Fe that I don't get to see as much as I'd like to. Um, I'm still always thinking about you guys, you guys are the reason I fight. Um, all my old teammates at Alchemy BJJ, um, all my family, my mom, my dad, my uncle Eddie, my auntie, Josh Montoya, his twins, Sophie and Liam. I uh, just want to say thanks to everybody who's always been there for me, everyone at FIT, the whole coaching staff. All the New Mexico Wild Bunch, everyone's helped me out a ton, and I appreciate all the love and support from everybody. Oh, and Dwayne at Functional Fury. Yeah, Thanks does you have any sponsors now you need to holler at? Uh, Dwayne at Functional Fury, he's a great strength and conditioning coach. He's helped me out plenty for this camp. Um, he's my only sponsor right now. Awesome. Drew Rivera, thank you for the time. King of the Cage Thunder, support.